What is up guys? So been really busy in the shop this week. Welding, just kind of um, welding up randomness. That rear section, I mean, a lot of stuff that I've kind of built over the last couple weeks on the channel have just been tacked together. So just been uh, kind of tidying a lot of that stuff up, uh, getting everything kind of finished welded. Um, I gotta be careful because I can spend a lot of time getting almost there to make videos, but then it not be finished. And then I'd have this huge pile of work that I actually got to catch up on technically for the channel. I mean, you guys don't want to see me welding for hours on end. So figure what I do for this week uh, so I can get kind of caught up and add a couple things to show you um, some of the stuff I got in the works, some new stuff uh, that I got in the mail, new additions. We'll start with this one. So it's not really bibster oriented, but uh, went and picked up a new decoration. Decoration? <sighs> that is one problem with having a truck that's too high. Hard as hell to get shit in and out of it. So, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this thing. It's off of a uh, Bonneville, Bonneville 455. If, uh, if you got any Pontiac fans out there, wait, tell me what year this thing is. I'd like to know. So it's just a, it's a Bonneville 455 Pontiac. Well, hell, it says 72 on it. Maybe it's a 72. Y'all let me know. So anyway, I gotta figure out maybe what I'm gonna do with this thing. Thought maybe a cool spot for it would be like... Up there or something? I don't know. So I thought this was a pretty cool piece. I thought it fit the shop pretty well. Um, not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with it. So it's got like a lot of the blo broke plastic standing at the bottom. Uh, kind of makes this flange. So what I thought about doing is kind of pulling these off. And then I've got some ABS. To make a nice clean flange that goes down the whole thing. Kind of wraps around and actually Kind of encases this lower section. It's got one headlight in it. So I'm torn. Do I like kind of fix it up, put some new beauty rings on these things, new headlights, maybe though um, modify the headlight where it works on like 12 volts and then put some really dim LEDs in there. So when the lights are on, it kind of has like a little small glow to it. It's not like a super bright headlight. Or just leave it the way it is. I don't know. We'll get back to that later. Let me show you what else I got. Got, uh, got some other things. Let's bust this thing open right quick. Staples in it. I love that about this car. Use it as a workbench. And we can go beat on it at the track. Always wanted something I didn't have to care about. All right, 
So this is some Alcoa tubing. This is inch and a half tubing. Um, 6061, which I don't know if it's gonna be the proper alloy or not. 049 wall, 6061 Alcoa uh, aluminum tube. I got two of them, so there's no one in there. So the idea with this is that uh, I'm gonna have to run some kind of coolant from the front of the bibster all the way to the back of the bibster. I mean, as you guys know, if you've been watching the build, radiators in the back. So I had to come up with something to kind of transfer that, and what better than aluminum, because it can kind of dissipate some of that heat as it travels back there. The only thing I didn't know about this, and maybe you guys, some of you guys can chime in, is that I didn't know if I was gonna be able to bend this in my roll bar bender. So I mean, it's a mandrel bender, and I know that you can bend some aluminum, but I'm not sure about this alloy, so that's a, 60-61 T6, maybe too brittle. I was just gonna try it. I was just gonna kind of stick it in there and see if we can bend it without cracking it. Um, worst case, uh, you know, these are actually like the perfect length. I'll have to kind of see when we get them over there, but worst case, I just run these straight and then on the ends of them, just, you know, run whatever kind of uh, rubber tube, rubber hose that I need to, to kind of turn these up and and maybe order some more of this and to get it kind of the radiator so i don't know i always want to try it i know there's all kinds of techniques some of those guys fill this stuff with sand they do all this kind of funky stuff just to keep from collapsing but the alloy itself if the alloy is too brittle it'll just crack regardless of what you do so if you guys know anything about mandrel bending aluminum tube or where to get it or anything like that just let me know drop it in the comments i'd appreciate it so what else, what else we got? We'll take this over to the car in just a minute. Now oh, these are just, uh, these are just some tag bracket, tag, tag pieces. So just like the little plastic square pieces and then the actual bolts, the tag bolts themselves. I want to kind of make it look legit. I could have just drilled holes and bolted it, but you know, for a couple bucks, make it feel like a regular car. And I think this is what I'm gonna use for the brake lights and turn signals. So I'll kind of show you what I got in mind. So in the last video, I kind of mentioned um, recess on a light so there's a panel obviously that goes here and i'll probably make some panels that kind of come down and turn out and kind of follow the shape of this rear section but what i was thinking would be cool is that instead of like hanging a light out here on the edge i thought about making this panel like stop maybe like right there and then build me like a flat piece of steel and kind of, you know, encase it, make this kind of a box in here. And then mount that light back here to the back. And, you know, in here like this. And then that way, like when you're kind of standing up like this, you don't see it. The sheet metal itself is going to cover it up. The only way you'd actually see the red is when you kind of get down in here. Um, but, you know, anytime that you're behind the vehicle, whether it's, during the day or at night or whatnot, when those lights come on, you're gonna see uh, lots of bright red light coming out of that slot in the sheet metal itself. You know, I'd probably make the slot like that. It'd kind of be angled back a little bit too. You just wouldn't be able to see, if you're looking right down, you wouldn't be able to see it. You'd have to kind of get down to, to catch it. So anyway, that's the idea on these. These are actually three wire deals. So it's got a ground, it's got a a dim and a bright. So the dim would be for running lights, the bright would be for brake lights, and then the bright would also work as the blinker. So there's those. The other thing I've really been contemplating back here is the fuel cell, so I gotta figure that out. I actually ordered a bunch of aluminum 
some pretty thick gauge aluminum. I was just gonna make a custom fuel cell for up front because that was kind of the plans at first. But um, I think I'm gonna put it back here in the back. I think I've pretty much made my mind I'm gonna put it back here in the back. And uh, the more I think about it, I'm like, why make a custom one if I can find one that's pretty close? It's already pretty much done. Because you can get the things pretty cheap. So I pulled some measurements and basically if I could go like 20 wide, uh, 10 deep, and like 8 inches, 8 or 10 inches I think, no it's 10 inches, 10 inches, 10 inches deep, 10 inches tall, and like 20 inches wide is what I could come up with, which comes out to like 8 or 10 gallons I think. And so I looked around to see what I could find that was already available that was really close to that. And I found some that are basically like 19 wide. Uh, maybe it was 8 inches tall. 8 or 10 inches tall, which would be perfect. The only problem was it was like 12 and a half inches deep. So I thought about like maybe cutting the back off and then save that panel and re-weld re it in there. But kind of based on what I got, it would come up to about right there. The filler would be like right in there with the pumps and everything. You can get those things for like a hundred bucks. I got tabs, I got um, like dash 10 fittings and fittings already welded into them. I mean, they're, they're pretty primo. And the nice thing is it already has a uh, filler gauge in it, not gauge, the sending unit. It's got a sending unit already in it for fuel level. So it'll be super easy to do. I ain't got to make none of that stuff. Worst case, I got to cut the back of it off and kind of re-weld it on there. Uh, I thought about doing that. I thought about buying, I found some like dual two and a half inch tanks. So I thought about maybe doing something like that because they were like perfect. I wouldn't have to modify them at all. I just have to make one bleed into the other. I don't know. I got to figure that out. It's on my list though. You kind of see where I've been back here welding this stuff up. Got most of these joints. Pretty well tigged. What else do I have? Oh, this. Well, two things. That, which I'll explain to you in just one second. Uh, also got some more um, bosses and fittings for up front. Some Heim joints for up front. Whoop. That one ain't no good no more. So what I want to do is I've got this main uh, tube that comes in on a Heim that basically supports the weight of the vehicle up here. And then really this, this tube over here just uh, kind of creates the, the support for the side to side which is also what this piece does as well. But I was like, you know what? This thing's not supporting any weight here other than, you know, whatever it's getting by triangulating this piece. Most of the weight of the vehicle is just held on one tube. So I was like, man, if I could, you know, tie a small hime in from here, maybe back to the chassis rail back here, you know, kind of like that, it would make it even stronger. So that's the plan with that tube is I'm gonna actually add one little kicker in here. Uh, it won't look really any different than what it does right now because it's gonna be, it'll be you know, down in here like this. So you won't even really see it, but it'll be double adjustable as well so I can kind of adjust that however I need to be, need to do as far as camber and caster goes, you know, if I need to make some adjustments on that. One thing I didn't show as well, when I had the motor out, I added a, a piece for the steering shaft. So I just made a little bracket that comes off that, that rail there. And uh, yeah, if I get this thing to focus. So just kind of supports that steering shaft, keeps it from any kind of wobbles or anything. All right, so 
So let's talk about the intake. So this, what you see right here is just a 3D model. Um, had a gentleman in Canada hit me up from, and I'm gonna probably botch this. His name is Omid, I think. That's how you pronounce his name. Uh, and the name of his company is Leman or Layman, Leman. I don't know. I'm sure the Canadians say it way different than I do, so it doesn't even matter. But anyway, he hit me up. He said, "Hey, man, let's do a let's do a uh, do a seed seed intake out of a piece of billet." I was like, "I'm down." So we started throwing around some ideas. I wanted it pretty close to what I already had, um, and he basically just sat down and designed the whole thing for me on his computer was sending me kind of renderings in 3D, uh, 3D drawings, I guess, where I can kind of rotate them and look at them. And then what's cool is he sat down and 3D printed this thing for me in four different sections. You can kind of see the line here. So he 3D printed it in four sections. 3D printed the ports for everything. And then just glued it together and sent it to me. It's uh, pretty ridiculous that just from some measurements that I gave him, and then I like uh, basically photocopied the port design on this thing. He made it match almost perfect. So we got a couple little things we want to iron out. A couple small little changes I think we want to make. But uh, hopefully, hopefully this thing will go into production. Solid aluminum. And I told him, I said, man, I want, I'm cool with you see, CNC in this thing, but I want, I want to see the pathways. I want you to use like a, like a ball mill on the end of that thing. And I want to like see the pathways. You know, this whole, this whole build's about being able to see the work. So I don't want it to be like perfectly clean and polished. I want to see the work. I want to see the work the machine did. I want to see the work that you did, you know. So I told him, I said, I don't want it to be perfect. I want to see all that. I want it to look like a big piece of jewelry. And I think it will once it's done. So yeah, that's like the big thing too. You might have caught it in the last video. I haven't had anybody put anything in the comments about it, but um, it was on the car in the last, towards the end of the last video. Nobody caught it though, that I know of. So, I think that's all the updates. I will tell you this, one other thing I had you know, initially I was planning on doing a carbon fiber setup. And when I, we first talked about um, putting this whole thing together, I kind of wanted the lower to be very true to what this piece I had mocked up was, just because I thought if he could do the lower flange like this, that um, I could use his upper or I could build a carbon fiber upper and use either one. Uh, that way I can do the content on the carbon fiber and just because I've been talking about it for so long. Uh, so I don't know, we're still, still in the works, but this is what I'm gonna do, I think I've decided. I'm still gonna fabricate another intake. So where he's gonna do the full machined one, and then what I'll do is I'll still take some uh, sheet aluminum, weld up a lower section that's flanged, very similar to that. I'll build a mold, we're gonna do a full carbon fiber upper, I'll kind of show you that whole process, do all that content. It's been a long time since I've done any carbon fiber, so I want to do some more of that. And then we'll have both, right? All right, guys, so let me know what you think. Let me know what you think on the tubing. What I said it was 6061T6, if you know anything about it. If you don't know, don't, don't comment, because let's, uh, let's get the folks that really know what they're talking about, so I'm not waste my time with that stuff. You know, I'm bending that stuff or what I need to buy in order to bend it. Uh, brake lights, thoughts on brake lights. I kind of talked about it before, I think it'll be cool. And then the intake, thoughts on the intake. And I don't know, I don't know how long it's gonna be before we actually get something. I'm not really in a big hurry. Wanna make it right, wanna do it right, wanna do it once the right way. So we working on it and I'll post updates now that kind of let the cat out of the bag. So anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son.